Good morning, good afternoon, good evening around the world. My name is Doug Brunke. I'm the founder and CEO of Global Chamber. We've got one of those kind of programs that keeps coming up on a regular basis because technology is changing and the world is changing uh, to allow business to happen anywhere in the world. Uh, not only is the technology portion changing, but what we're talking about today in B2C e-commerce uh, is something where regulations, local regulations need to change to be able for it to work in a really efficient way. So that if somebody, for instance, um, that's happening in the U.S. today is living in Mexico City and they order a pair of sneakers that is fulfilled by a warehouse in the United States, they now can get them delivered uh, next day at a reasonable price without having to go through the custom rigmarole that it would have had to do five years ago or even maybe a year ago. Uh, I'm not sure, but I know that there have been some uh, regulations and laws changed to allow the customs process to go faster, plus just the whole logistics management uh, including the technology to manage all of that. So we're going we're gonna to be talking a little bit more broadly on that. And we're also going to have a little bit of a different perspective, not U.S.-Mexico, but more uh, in, our, in, in our speaker today, in J.B. Deal, uh, Jean-Baptiste Deal. He's based in Hong Kong. He's going to be talking about a lot of the work that he's doing, primarily in China, but also across borders. He's originally from France, I think from France. I've been telling people that, but you'll have to correct me if that's wrong. Certainly French speaking. For some reason, as soon as I said that, I, I thought maybe maybe it's Belgium. or something. Where, where are you from originally? What, what's, um, what city were you born? Well, I was born in the, the city of Champagne, France. Ah, uh, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so definitely not Belgium. So thank, I'm, I'm glad I remembered that. And, and part of what you do, and we've had uh, the pleasure of, of hearing you speaking about uh, the uh, business opportunities in Eastern France, uh, we appreciate your activities on that side of things too. And it was one of uh, my favorite uh, programs that we've had this year because of your knowledge of, of that region, and certainly must be partly because of you being from there. Today is, is going to be a little bit different uh, uh, conversation around e-commerce. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you for Zooming in late in the evening there in Hong Kong. And we look forward to the conversation. Please, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Doug, for having me. And uh, it's a pleasure meeting everyone. Um, so my name is JB, uh, short for Jean-Baptiste. I'm French based in Hong Kong. I arrived in China about 20 years ago. I studied uh, Chinese at the Beijing Language and Culture University. And uh, since that time, I've been here in Asia. Um, initially, I was uh, working for different companies from the France, from Italy, from the US, from China. And then at some point I realized, you know, I had a lot of skills and I wanted to utilize them. So I set up my own company and uh, I've been a business accelerator for the last five years. Um, probably over five years now. Uh, so as a business accelerator, you can see me as a value creator uh, based in Hong Kong, working on cross-border project, projects, mostly between Europe and Asia with a focus on France because that's where I'm from and from China because that's where I'm located. But I also work with other um, you know, on, on companies based in the US, based in Japan, Southeast Asia, you know, even Africa, you know, and, um, so I'm doing a lot of different things. Uh, so I create value thanks to my strength, which is language, culture, uh, negotiation, network, and integrity. So five core strengths. Um, and uh, three industries, procurement, sales, and investments. Um, so it's a lot of things, but I'm always here. Uh, you can see me as a small piece of the puzzle. And I work with the different companies as a value creator, business accelerator. So as you mentioned, uh, Doug, I'm working on the um, cross-border e-commerce. And I, in fact, I represent uh, a company called Lingo. And uh, when I say I represent, I have a contract with them. So I'm, I'm a contractor 
with different organizations. You mentioned earlier about government agencies. I do have contracts with government agencies. My, my role is really to create value, you know, uh, connect you with the right people for uh, achieving the target, getting the information you need, you know, get things done, uh, business accelerator. So uh, let me share my screen and uh, uh, so I can, we can start to go ahead with uh, Lingbo. Can you all see my screen now? We, we can, yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Great. All right, so uh, Lingbo, uh, well, what you can see here is, is basically a picture of two people. So Lingbo is, um, is a partner. Uh, this is really, really important because today you find so many service providers and every day, you know, we receive emails, oh, create a website, do this, do that, blah, 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 you know. And, and this, this approach from Lingbo is very different because it's really a partnership. And uh, I'm going to get to that in a minute, but um, uh, basically they act as partners and they are here for the long-term trying to uh, create value. So, um, so Lingbo is a global e-commerce expert and uh, they help to generate sales in over 100 countries. So the team is very international. There's people in the US, people in Japan, uh, Asia, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, France, you know, it's, it's really all over the place. Uh, it's uh, a team of experts uh, working on e-commerce. Um, so they focus on, on removing the pain points of selling on e-commerce uh, because basically working with, uh, you know, on e-commerce for brands and a lot of companies is really difficult. You know, it's a lot of work. Um, you have to do maintenance, website development. Uh, you have to do, you know, be familiar with customs, with payment, return of goods. It's, it's really a lot of micromanagement. And a lot of businesses and brands, they don't want to go into B2C because of this. It's too much work and too much. Um, it, it's really complicated. It's really a, a pain point, basically. So, um, so Lingbo is actually here to take care of this part. So all of the difficult stuff, basically Lingbo is here to do that. Um, so Lingbo is, is looking for brand with potential. And uh, what, what we mean by brands with potential is um, brands that have the, the, the possibility to sell internationally. Maybe they're doing good at home, selling in their home country, but they're not yet selling very well overseas. And uh, there's a lot of uh, synergies and growth that can be brought by uh, Lingbo will help to expand. So another key focus is basically for any brand, you know, it's very expensive to have like experts in e-commerce in all those different countries. You know, it could be Korea, Japan, China, you know, US, Europe. It, 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 it would be very costly to have such a big team specialized on, on the global e-commerce. So this is really another focus and, and value of, um, you know, point of value creation for Lingbo is to work on, um, you know, international global uh, e-commerce. So coming back to that, we are really looking for brands with potential. And uh, when I said earlier that Lingbo is a partner, basically they have a, a, a business model which is based on success fees. So they will not charge anything. Um, they only charge for their work for all of the works, uh, website setup, maintenance, all of the work, uh, they only charge a success fee. And it has to be discussed, but it's around 15, 20%. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, this is for brands with potentials, uh, potential. But um, if other brands that do not have so much potential, what I mean by potential is also the number, you can look at the number of visits um, you know, on your e-commerce uh, website, how many, people are going to connect to your website every month or every year. And let's say that you have over 1 million visits on your website, definitely you're a brand with a lot of potential because you already have a lot of, um, you know, uh, people know you and uh, you have a strong customer base, brand recognition is strong. So this is definitely a, a, brand, a brand with a lot of potential um, in the home country. But for other brands, uh, like sometimes, some brands are very small. They have less than 5,000 uh, visits, uh, you know, per month, very, uh, very uh, early stage, I would say. Uh, then in that case, you definitely need a lot of uh, work 
and um, uh, Lingbo can work as a service provider um, for doing the setup with the website, um, doing the marketing management. You know, they can also uh, be paid as a on a success. You know, but this is very general. Uh, so Lingbo is really helping brands to expand internationally. So. Um, just to give you a few uh, uh, success stories, um, this is a list of um, services, but basically, um, you know, I don't want to push too much of Lingbo. I really want to give more value to uh, all the audience and all the people listening. So we're going to look at case, case studies. So hopefully everyone can learn from this presentation and, um, you know, hopefully it's, it's helpful uh, to you. So this is an example of uh, one brand of uh, uh, jeans. And um, um, I got, but normally this is confidential information. I got a special appro approval from the management of the Lingbo to share with you this presentation, by the way. Um, so the Nemo is, is um, a, um, a, a pair of uh, sorry, um, a company that is specialized in, in selling jeans, basically. Uh, so they started by doing uh, 0 0.2 million US dollar of sales. Um, and after six years, they went up to 3 million uh, US dollars. So this is really an example of what can be done. Um, another example, but of, obviously for starting from so low, you, you need a, a few things because Lingbo is here to you know, help and guide, you know, but at the same time, the brand needs to have its own, they need to be ready for selling on, on the uh, cross global e-commerce. So they need to have like a, a, a logistic setup. You know, they need to be able to work together with FedEx, you know, uh, the post, you know, the, the, the post services, um, you know, DHL and those kind of uh, providers, service uh, logistic providers. But they also need to have a marketing budget. Uh, if you are starting from very, low, you need a marketing budget to be successful on, on the, um, you know, on, on the market, basically, because you need people to see you. So um, it's, it's very hard to say how much budget needs to be spent. It really depends on the type of product. But we can say that usually it's a range between 5 to 15%. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a brand owner, uh, you can basically put, uh, if you're selling a pro your product at 100, you have to reinvest five to $15 into uh, marketing. And that's, that's just a rule of thumb. Uh, but it can, it can be more, it can be less, but uh, you know, normally it should not be too little because you have to do a lot of different things in, in marketing. You have to you know, work with a key opinion leader. You have to maybe give some gift to um, uh, people that have channels, you know, do review, product review on YouTube, you know, uh, there's so many ways that uh, we can help with marketing. So Lingbo, they can help with the management of the marketing budget. Uh, and in fact, they're expert at that. Um, but it can be done by the brand by itself, you know. And um, so Lingbo will, will be, a, uh, if you are a brand, and if you have to focus on, um, you know, I mean, you, you must have a marketing budget and you must have like a, a wish to work in, in cross-border e-commerce, so you have to have the setup ready for logistics. Um, and uh, yeah, so Lingbo can help with all the pain, the other pain point we discussed earlier. And this is a, a pretty good uh, example of a success story. And basically, Denimio is, is doing very well in the Japanese market. So this is really uh, uh, something to uh, keep in mind also. Um, I think it's, it's good to mention that if you want to start selling on B2C, you should have a target. You know, you should really focus maybe on Japan, Japanese market, EU. Are you going to target the UK, Germany, France? Do you want to target China? Do you want to target Southeast Asia, Korea? You know, I think it's 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 up to you basically, and you can go once one step at a time. But it's good to have a focus at the beginning. Um, yeah. So this is about this uh, success story uh, in Japan. Um, we have another one. Uh, also in the fashion industry. And this one is um, short term. So basically, uh, you can see the sales of 4,800 4, US dollar prior, you know, per month, uh, selling with, uh, uh, with, uh, by themselves. And then after joining Lingbo, 
suddenly you reach up to 15,000, 15,100, uh, uh, 15,100 US dollar, you know, um, uh, after one month of joining Limbo. So this is another success story. And um, yeah, so also very popular in Japan. Um, and, you know, if you're targeting Japanese market, this is really a focus for the success story because usually the, the Japanese market is seen as very difficult. You need to speak Japanese. You know, the Japanese market is, is not easy. You know, it's not easy to enter, the, to enter Japan. Uh, but Lingvo did it. And in fact, there are so many success stories in, in Japan. Um, so it's it's uh, it's a pleasure to share with you those success stories. But basically, um, if you have any question regarding um, you know cross border global e-commerce, feel free to let me know, and um, you know we can answer questions you may have. Um, so in a nutshell, basically, if you look at the you know on the left side, you you, you see one picture, and this represents micro management. So um, you can go from a very complicated situation to a very simple uh, setup working with someone like Limbo. Um, and then we're here to support basically, you know, so um, you, you see my, my contact. Uh, we have one man also, but um, we have many people in the Limbo team. So we have people speaking English, uh, French, German, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, you know, many languages. And uh, we'll definitely be able to support uh, brands uh, that want to expand their cross-border e-commerce. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for uh, the presentation, uh, Doug, for the time to do this presentation. And uh, if anyone has any question, please uh, feel free to ask. And I'm here to answer any question you, you may have. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you very much for the succinct and very clear uh, presentation. We'll open up the floor to questions and, and I'll just ask you either to raise your hand or just uh, unmic yourself when we get to that to that point. I do have a, just a couple of quick questions. In terms of geography, where do you in particular um, work? Good question. Well, obviously I'm French, so I will target the French market. Um, and if there is any uh, specific, um, anything specific in France or in the French speaking world, you know, uh, a big part of Africa, or you mentioned Belgium and Ke Quebec, you know, and, and uh, um, definitely I, I'm, you know, my, one of my strengths, as, as I said earlier, is language and culture, you know, so uh, speaking French is definitely very important. So I'm, I'm here to, that, to do that. And obviously also the Asian market, uh, Chinese market, uh, that would be my strength. Um, but uh, in any case, it doesn't matter where you're from, we have people in the US and you know, we can uh, assign a project manager from uh, Japan or another location to, uh, to the project. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so Africa is in play, it sounds like. Yes, definitely, yes. Um, uh, what questions do people have? Uh, welcome, uh, folks, uh, for joining us today. Feel free to unmute yourself. Also, along the way, feel free also to, to press your information into the, into the chat area. Uh, welcome, uh, Lamine and Ruby. I see Ruby from uh, Ghana. Tommy from Puerto Rico, thank you for joining, and Didi. Um, uh, thanks for your work with Branus the, the other day and that deal that seems to be coming together, at least the, the last I heard, and Khadija as well. Um, while I'm waiting for a question, just un, unmute yourself and then we'll allow you to ask your question. I, I had a question around just, oh, oh, Christopher joined. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you. Um, in terms of the actual uh, regulations to be able to do uh, e-commerce, um, I'm wondering what you found so far country to country. Are there certain countries that already are very advanced in terms of how developed they are to receive products from other, other countries? Good question. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, products that are um sensitive uh depending on the on the country 
And obviously, in some countries, we cannot sell firearms or you know drugs or things of the of this nature. Um, and you have to look into the details to know which country. You know, in some countries, they might have like specific regulation. But we can definitely uh, we have list of products that cannot be sold, so we will quickly um, know it. And uh, you know, if you have any any specific product, definitely we'll we'll be able to tell you. But overall. Um, selling on cross-border B2C is much easier than doing B2B. Uh, if you do B2B, you know, you have to set up an office overseas, you have to get the certificates, you know, certification, you have to uh, do the testing, you have to do a lot of things, you know, and, and in some countries, you also legally require to have an importer uh, or someone to represent you, and um, it it can be quite complicated, especially, for example, in China. You know, if you want to work in B2B, it's, it's definitely uh, not easy. But if you uh, work in B2C, uh, because you are selling one single piece at a time, uh, you are kind of getting, getting through this, all of this. You are short, shortcutting this, uh, those level of difficulties, and it's definitely much easier. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about la labeling, about, you know, a lot of different... Uh, uh, issues that you may otherwise have if you work in B2B. Yeah, so it, it's definitely easier um, for, you know, brands that, that want to try a new market, uh, oh. you know. Oh, okay. Uh, that was, Zach, you touched on one of my other questions, but let's go to Khadija next. You have your hand raised and you're on mic. Khadija, uh, welcome. Uh, what question do you have? Hello. Thank you. Um, my question is uh, about selling in Asia, Europe, e-commerce. So the main problem I have for my country is um, the career. Uh, sometimes you want to sell uh, on specific websites, but it's not possible because they don't have any representative in your country. So I am from Niger in West Africa, and most of these careers don't have a representative or how to call this. And we have DHL, which is very expensive in my country it's to sell online. But if there is a, um, yeah, uh, solutions that you have for me. Okay, um, usually what we see is uh, companies have, um, okay, Lingbo number one, Lingbo doesn't take care of the logistics. They handle the coordination with the logistics. Um, and we can definitely connect you with ser different service provider in our network. I have to double check about, uh, you know, your country and it would be great if you can share maybe some more information by email about your product. Um, but um, um, I think, you can definitely talk and work with uh, DHL, but you can also work with the regular postal services. That would usually be a cheaper option. Um, you know, if you're working, for example, from uh, even buying on Amazon, you know, uh, not talking about Lingo, but buying on Amazon, they sometimes they, they sell and they ship by a post, French post. And, um, you know, you will, they, they just tell you, oh, uh, you will receive your product after two to four weeks, something like that. They give you a, a, a time, but it's not very specific. And people kind of expect, you know, it's going to, have, it's going to arrive when it, when it arrives and you don't have a tracking number, but it doesn't matter. People still buy it, you know? So uh, I guess working with the normal, uh, a cheap, um, uh, you know, regular postal service would work. So the work that you're doing, um, you've got you're you're covering the website and the marketing, and I presume that includes the localization as well, and then in coordination with people like DHL and others that might be on the the ground. Yes, exactly. So um, uh, the way Lingbo works is uh, they will analyze the the current website, you know, from the from the company from the brand. Um, we'll have a look at how many, uh, you know, what's the average uh, uh, basket price, what's the, um, uh, the number of visits every month, 
um, uh, you know, we'll do an initial analysis of the situation and then we'll do our recommendations of what we should be doing, what we, what, what we think will work, what we think will not work. In some cases, we just go to the brand and say, hey, you know, uh, we think that you're doing very well because you are selling in B2B, you're selling on a, you know, platform like, um, um, you know, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or some other Amazon. And we think Lingbo doesn't have so much uh, room to help you, you know, so we just tell the brand, hey, continue what you're doing. You're doing very well. And, and uh, we think that you're, you will be uh, very successful. You know, we, we, we are very, uh, we are very open. Like I said, Lingbo is a partner and uh, they will tell you what to think. Uh, they can do what they think they cannot do, you know, and uh, that's uh, so. We'll 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 have a look at the at the brand, and also we'll we'll do a, a roadmap. Uh, set up. We'll do the coordination, as you mentioned, with logistic, uh, with also marketing, marketing management. Um, okay. And uh, we'll develop the website. Usually, we have a target to start first, it would be maybe uh, focus on one country, US maybe, uh, or focus on Japan maybe. And then slowly we'll try to move to other countries and see what works, what doesn't work. Because sometimes you know, you, you're working on, uh, let's say Japan, and then you realize, oh, China is a big target, but for some reason your product doesn't work so well in, in, in China or in Korea, for example. I had the example of a, um, an Italian fashion brand from um, you know, and the, the the style was 1980s kind of style, and in Korea it really doesn't work. The reason is it's part of the culture, you know, because the 1980s in Korea was a time of, you know, hardship. It was, a, you know, people were starving in in South Korea, you know, and and people if you if you tell them, hey, I have this brand from the 1980s, it doesn't sell, you know, it's it's really down to the market, and and so. If you do something, you know, we, we are going to try different small steps, little by little. We'll go in the, in the focus in maybe Japan, but then we can expand in other countries and add, you know, different languages, different, um, um, uh, you know, specificities for developing the market. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did, yeah. Katija, um, I wonder, do, uh, do you what is your product or products, and have you had already some success in either uh, Niger or in other countries surrounding Niger? So, I, I my products are basically I am a fashion designer, so I make, uh, um, I repurpose things. I I create things uh, from others, <laughs> and okay. um, I wanted to. So I'm just at the beginning, so I didn't have much of success in the the West African countries. But um, I am selling little by little in my country first. This is what I am working on. But I am thinking of like selling. Uh, online and um, to European and Americans and why not Asia. Okay, interesting. That, that sounds good. I see Ruby Golo is in this uh, room as well and she's very much in touch with Ghana. Have you two already met each other or have you already connected to Ruby? And I don't know if Ruby often she's driving or she's somewhere else, usually listening, but not able to always chat but uh, we definitely would love to understand a little bit more about what this market looks like in Ghana. Doug you, you you've you've guessed right I'm actually on the road it's time to pick my daughter from school um <laughs> yes I'll be delighted to connect with her and better understand uh, what her objectives are and to see how I can help her on the ground here um, I do have a question for um, your your guests. Um, so, apart from being the executive director for Global Chamber in Ghana, I have a private uh, business um, consulting firm, and I do get requests for market research. Um, and when you prepare the proposal, they tend not to come back. So, my question to him is: 
uh, what would be his advice? Because, I mean, you need to do market research to understand the local market um, and in order for us to put you in touch with the right uh, local partners, et cetera. But people tend not to appreciate uh, market research. So I'm just wondering um, what uh, his advice will be to kind of uh, explain this further to clients. Thank you. People think they know the answer, right, JB? And, and without the research, often find things to be much more difficult than they imagined. What, how would you answer that question for Ruby? Yes, well, um, there's a lot of things we can say about market studies. Um, in a nutshell, people usually like market studies, but they don't like to pay for them. And that's very, very true in Asia. Um, and in some other parts of the world, people are very, uh, uh, you know, the minute you say, oh, I, I'm, let's do a market study, then they, they, they run away. <laughs> but um, so people expect, especially in Asia, and I guess it's also true in other, in many parts of the world, people expect that if you're a seller, you have to know your, your, your stuff and you have to, um, you know, be delivering value. So um, at the end of the day, you know, we are here to create value and uh, just giving some information on the market is helpful, but it doesn't sell. And um, people are more like uh, looking for real solutions to start selling. Um, so I think Lingbo will be uh, doing a kind of analysis. Um, they don't like, you know, they don't like to do a lot of analysis because sometimes, you know, the company will, will, take the whole thing and then go away, you know, it's also a risk. So there's um, a kind of a balance between how much uh, market study or work you can do and, and um, you know, from lingual perspective um, to um, uh, a company that wants to be a partner, you know, initially they will, they will do some research, but it's going to be limited. And in, in, normally they will sign a confidentiality agreement, um, but there will definitely be some kind of uh, sharing, you know, to tell you what we think um, based on our observation, based on our knowledge. It could be, for example, about cosmetics, you know, and, and cosmetics, uh, we have people that, that uh, are specific, you know, specialized in cosmetics in, in Japan. And uh, just an example. And then definitely this has a lot of value, you know, as uh, if you want to order a market study, definitely you can, you can, this has a lot of value. But, but at the end of the day, we're here to, um, sell products, you know, we're here like, um, um, so we'll, we'll put a, a proposal, like a solution for uh, going forward. Yeah, I, I don't know if I answer your question correctly or if you wanted to have more specific, uh, um, yeah, comment. Yes, you have indeed, and I will, I'll, I'll get in touch. Great, pleasure, Thanks. Ruby, anytime. Thank you, Ruby, drive carefully. Um, the, um, you, you brought up, um, I think, uh, at least an issue for, for me that I wanted to ask in countries where, for instance, Amazon is strong, which certainly in the U S or in South Korea with coupon, you know, how would Lingbol work with say coupon in South Korea? Um, and how does that how does that get structured? What would a typical deal look like if somebody wanted to enter the South Korean market? You know, I I would have approached Coupon uh, in, until this conversation today. How would Lingbol relate to that? And then what would a typical deal look like in terms of money put up front, money spent on market research, any other investment that's required to get into the market? Oh, it's uh, thank you. A very broad, um, you know, topic. But uh, um, so first of all, uh, Amazon. You know, if let's say you have a store and you're selling on Amazon, that's great for you. You know, Amazon is a big marketplace, and you can definitely sell a lot of things on Amazon. Um, and um, it, it's it's another topic. But uh, what I want to say is, Amazon is uh, different from Lingbo in a way that Lingbo is more helping to build your brand. So if you have your own store, your own e-commerce, your own EC store, it's always better because the clients, uh, they usually like a brand. They become like, um, uh, they love the product. You know, 
they, they know your brand, they know your story, they know your quality, they know your, uh, your product, they, they want to buy your brand. You have a follower, you have a community of follower, you have like, uh, uh, you engage with your client base and most likely they will come again, right? So this is what you want to build. Uh, if you sell shoes, if you sell razors, you know, you, if you sell whatever you, you, as a consumer, whatever you want to buy, you, you like to deal and buy products that are, that have their own website, quality website, you feel secure, you feel you like, you feel in love with the product and the brand. And, and so this is something that you have to build. Um, and it's, it's not, of course you can sometimes buy on Amazon, but if you go on Amazon and you realize this seller doesn't have their own website, you know, it doesn't, it's not the same, basically you're more looking for commodity, you know, and, and Commodity means cheap and probably it's maybe like just one time and, and then maybe next time they just buy a, some the, the same product a bit cheaper, five cents cheaper from someone else, you know. But if you have your own brand and your own um, history and uh, product and, you know, value proposition to the consumer, then um, I think you really want to have your own uh, e-commerce website. And, and, and this is where Lingo can help. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I think uh, it's it's uh, it's a key difference from uh, from. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to work with Lingo and not Amazon. Not at all. You can do both at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Is is that the same relationship with Coupon in South Korea? For those of you who are familiar with with that, have you worked with them or as Lingbo? I must have worked with them. You mentioned the South Korea market earlier. Yeah, we have um, uh, one colleague that is Korean and speaks Korean. I, I'm sure he, he knows and worked with them before, but not personally because I'm more focused on China and France, but, uh, okay. uh, but I'm sure my colleague in charge of, in Korea will know and, and have this type of experience. And we work as teams, you know, I can, um, uh, sure. sometimes I'm working with Korean companies, but obviously it's easier to communicate, communicate in Korean, so they will work uh, together. Um, so you I mentioned earlier, also another very important uh, question um, and this is about marketing and about the long-term vision you know if you want to start selling on e-commerce b2c uh, it's at the very beginning no one knows you you have to have a good website but if it's a very pretty the best website in the world and if no one knows about you obviously you don't have you won't have any clients right so you, you have to uh, recognize that uh, you have to connect and build up your brand recognition and this takes time so you need at the beginning um, some marketing budget to make some buzz on the market otherwise people don't know you you know the, the problem is people just never heard of you and, and that's what you need to do at the very beginning so usually you need to have a marketing budget to do all sort of activities you know google soe you need to um, have a Facebook page, you need to have Instagram, you, you have a lot of things that you need to do for building your brand awareness. And um, you need to have a marketing budget. This is, there's no shortcut, basically, but this is a long term plan. And let's say that uh, you, you start from zero, um, maybe, but it depends on your product, it depends on, on lo a lot of different variables. Um, so I, I cannot really give a, a specific amount. But to be very, very general, if you start from zero, the marketing budget that you need to put up front would be maybe around 600,000 US dollar to make things right. But again, it depends for which market because all of the markets are very different. And if you have a bit of a brand recognition, let's say you have, um, let's say uh, 300,000 visits on your website per year, you can decrease that amount um, to maybe two to 300,000 US dollar a year. Um, and uh, if you have over 1 million visits a year, you, technically you don't really need to spend any money on marketing, but it's still good to reinvest some of your um, uh, you know, revenue, um, maybe five, 10%, 15% from your sales into marketing to keep you know, building the brand, maintaining the customer base. And usually what we can see is um, if you look at the project, it's not like a, a one-year plan. It's, it's like at least six or seven years. You have to think over a period of six to seven years to see some results. And, um, you know, after, um, 
after some time, you will definitely recover all of your investment. It's it's a you know a return on investment. It takes time, but it's it's definitely there. You know, and and uh, if you work with the right people, um, it can be cheaper to do this way rather than working in B two B. Um, and B two B meaning finding local distributors. You know, because if you ask someone else to invest for you this marketing budget, obviously they have to earn somewhere, right? And and if they do that, it means in the long run, for example, they will be a distributor, so they will charge 20, 30, up to 50%. If you work with client like in the in the mass market, you know, like Walmart uh, or retailers, they, they will charge, they will ask for 50% roughly of the of the retail price, right? So over the long per a long period of time, this 50% is very, it's a lot of money. But if you if you work on B2C, it's, it's definitely going to be a, a much lower uh, amount. And at the beginning, you have to invest by yourself uh, into the marketing budget, but very quickly, maybe after two years, three years, it depends on a lot of things. Um, for example, it depends on the average basket price. What's the, the average basket price? If it's less than uh, the normal, the golden amount would be around maybe 100 US dollar. If you sell product, your, your basket price is around 100 US dollar. It's a good amount because basically uh, it, the logistic doesn't cost too much and, and there's a lot of different variables, but it, it's a sweet spot for um, for selling on B2C. You know, if you are selling very cheap products, uh, the, the cost of logistics will be a, a bit too high. You know, if you sell like very cheap items, uh, but in that case, it might be just good to uh, sell on Amazon. You know, if it's really like very cheap items that you uh, um, that uh, for which you don't really need to have a brand, but uh, let's say you're selling shoes or you're sh selling like uh, hats or uh, you know razors or you know you know cosmetics or uh, different types of products, um, that would probably be like a good spot would be uh, 50 to 100 US dollar. And then after that, if that is the case, maybe after two three years, if you have the, the right strategy, the right amount of marketing. Uh, the right setup, you can start to break even. Um, it can be much faster in some cases. Um, and um, yeah, but you have to have a, a six, at least six to seven, maybe eight, maybe nine years vision for your project. Yeah. Um, but it depends, you know, I, 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 it always depends. And, and uh, I think we have to have a look at the, at the specifics. Lamine, yes. Uh, can you hear sorry, me? Sorry, Lamine is from Montreal, so probably uh, parlez-vous français? Probably. Oui, je parle bien français. C'est ma première langue. Uh, <laughs> and you also you have an e-commerce background as well. So, what's uh, uh, please uh, go ahead with your question? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me well? Very well. Thank you. Oh, great. Great. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a question uh, just to understand the, the, uh, the scope of your company. Uh, so I'm the founder of uh, Pitaki.com. So uh, just to give a little bit of uh, uh, insight, it's an uh, e-commerce platform. Um, uh, so um, it's our own platform and uh, the focus is uh, helping African farmers export uh, internationally. Uh, well, in the short term, uh, the goal is to help them export their products to uh, uh, US and Canada. And uh, it's B2B focused first. Uh, we thought of B2B uh, because those, uh, the cooperative that we found, or you have the certifications, um, Etc. And already have experience exporting to those countries, but uh, our goal is uh, kind of a marketing and also on borders um, uh, side to it. Uh, but uh, I've been more uh, starting to explore uh, the B2B angle um, by having some uh, products derived uh, derived from those. Uh, for example, having beverages. Uh, from some of those products because we have access to the suppliers or to the farmers producing uh, the ingredients for those uh, products. And the products are, for example, beverages in cans or, or bottles. 
Now the question is um, around the scope of uh, your organization. Uh, do you, would you be able to help, for example, uh, connect with uh, um, uh, producers of cans so they can transform those products and put them into cans or bottles and help with distribution from there? Um, or uh, where does your scope stop? Or is it um, mostly focused on marketing? Uh, Good question. Thank you, Lamine. Thank you, Lamin. Um, okay, so it sounds like you're talking more about uh, commodity trading more than brands. Um, and uh, for commodity trading, maybe this is, uh, it can be done on the marketplace, you're right. Uh, but this is very specific. It, it's, it's not really uh, what I was describing. And um, it, it's, I would say Lingbull is more suitable for brands, you know, for any brands you, you have, you want to develop. It can be also for a, a, a platform, right? For a, a multi-brand platform. But it's it's about brands. Um, what yeah, about? So I, I forgot about, to. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think I missed explain a segment. So when I said we're starting to explore the B two B angle, uh, and I I've had the ideas of making uh, canned beverages. That's the angle that uh, looking into uh, creating our own brand. So I already have the idea of a uh, name of the cans, uh, and now it's to figure out who can, uh, let's say, bottle those products, who can uh, take those ingredients and put them into those cans and bottles and then help with uh, distribution. So it's uh, building the brand, right? It's yeah, exactly. and, the pack, and the packaging. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Understood. What, well, a zombie. Yeah. Yeah, I think Limbo might not be able to provide this type of service because this is very specific to find a bottler. Uh, it, it, it might be different also for a uh, different market. If you're looking at the uh, you know, Asian market, you want to find like, um, let's say, uh, if you're selling like a Coca-Cola, you know, you have to find a, a bottler in China to do that and, uh, and start selling. So this is definitely, um, I think you need local partners, local distributors to do this kind of work. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, I'm not sure if it's, if B2C cross-border B2C is the right, uh, uh, the right uh, channel. Well, it, it may be one step away. Uh, there are people in the U.S. that do, pa you know, packaging design, and they would very often have connections to local manufacturing. So if somebody has an idea and a product, you, you can get it through a, a, a third party, if you will, get it, you know, the package designed, get them, you know, to get it packaged. But now once that's all put together, that's that's where you guys would take over, right? You've got the, you've got everything put together, the product's defined, it's got a brand name, um, and then you can take it and, and actually build the, even the website and do all the logistics part and get it to the market. Is that, is that fair? Yes, uh, Limbo will evaluate any project. They will never say no. They will say, show us, you know, uh, <laughs> please, okay. please send us the details of what uh, you have and we'll, we'll tell you what we think. Uh, maybe you can send me an email. I put my, my email in the, in the comments and uh, we can have a look. And um, um, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a business accelerator. Um, I am uh, in contact with the, uh, uh, someone in Togo that has a very similar project to yours, but he's using a different approach and he's uh, focused on between Togo and, and France, basically. So he has a, a trading company in France, but um, I'm happy to connect you with him also. So maybe he can share, uh, you know, experience or his advice is, is a good friend. So I'm happy to, you know, share, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, I understand uh, better the scope. Uh, of your business and uh, yeah would like to uh, connect with you uh, later uh, sounds good uh, i see your contact info so we'll uh, reach out thank you great what, thank which, you which countries are you looking to target lamin uh yeah uh, so uh, us and uh, canada okay because i live in canada and uh, yeah and strategically those areas because it's like a big territory and generally, it's uh, uh, um, 
same kind of regulations for a large uh, access to uh, consumers compared to if we say Europe, which has multiple small countries with different regulations. So that's why we wanted to start with uh, America first, uh, strategically. Okay. Like, uh, okay. so, but looking forward to expand, of course, in the future, depending on yeah, the situation. Got it. So in no, in that case, um, JB, he needs to worry about the labeling, right? The re local requirements for labeling in the U.S. and Canada, you know, making sure like the ingredients are listed re relative to regulations. Does Lingbull get involved with that as well in terms of like you're going to sell your product to China? Will they advise that, well, you better do this, you can't use this material, you know, things like that? Um, uh, okay, there, there's many topics, but uh, one is B2B. Uh, so Lingbo doesn't do B2B. Um, and definitely uh, for B2B, it's a lot more complicated in terms of regulation. Um, so labeling, regulation, packaging, you know, all sort of uh, requirements, uh, ingredients, okay. uh, testing, so, and, and yeah. So Lingbo will not a couple not times. So you're saying with B2C, the, the, the label requirements are much less, even for food and cosmetics and things like that. Is that what you're, you're saying? Yes, it is. Okay. Exactly. It is. Okay. I didn't realize that. That's, that's, that's good. Um, we're coming close to the top of the hour, and I want to make sure we have uh, time for JB to make any closing comments. But uh, I also see Tommy in the in the audience. Tommy, you've got a clothing line and other, I think, other products as well. I don't know if you're able to to, to chat and ask any, either make comments based on your own experience or have any questions. Welcome uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, yes. Do you, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Uh, no, it's very interesting, you know, what um, what JB has been uh, talking about, the uh, international e-commerce. Uh, right now, we, we are very focused on the U.S. territory since we got, it's very close to us. Uh, so, so we are kind of like, you know, testing the markets over there, especially in Florida and, and the south, um, southern United States. Yes, uh, just you know, to give you a little presentation, JB, we, we have a um, uh, clothing line, casual clo clothing line and accessories that are very targeted to customers who do traveling and, and, and nautical water sports and such things. So, so we're right in the, uh, in the, basically in the water park, <laughs> surrounded <laughs> by everybody else. So, so we are very focused here. We would love to jump eventually you know, to Asia uh, our brand is registered in Japan, by the way, but um, you know, one, one step at a time. Uh, it's it's very overwhelming the amount of work, but it, very interesting conversation. Um, right now, our traffic online is not as big as as what you were um, showing. I mean, you're not up to a million yet. No, not yet. No. Okay, <laughs> we, we're very focused on wholesale right now. Uh, we go to trade shows, and ex by the way, next week we're. We're going to Orlando to the to to exhibit the brand, uh, but uh, online is you know right there. You know the next focus to you know to to keep on pumping, but not yet to the one million visitors a year. Hopefully soon. So, but anyway, I, I wanted to you know to say thank you for the presentation, amazing presentation, uh, yeah. and, and very great insights though. Your main brand is is fishy. Yeah, I'll share it in the chat right now. Okay. So you great. can take a look. Um, it's called Fishy.world. And it's it's 1980s, it's Italy fashion. Is that what you're saying? Well. <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry, that's a bad joke. No, that's okay. It's, that's okay. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> it's very casual, you know. We're very light, you know. This is our dress code here, you know. It, um, we're very casual, you know, people. Uh, uh -huh. so so what we have is swimwear uh you know dad caps and t-shirts and you know very uh, no shoes no shirt no problem kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very awesome so thank you for sharing uh, yeah, uh, J you, uh jb uh we've just got a, a few minutes left did, did you want to make any uh, closing comments and anything else that you'd like to share before we we close the the, the room 
Well, thank you very much for everyone for sharing uh, details. And uh, Tommy, uh, I looked at your website, it looks really good. So please send me details uh, by email and you know we can have more discussions and, and uh, uh, same for everyone on the call. And um, you know, it, it, it's a pleasure to be here and to create value to you know, uh, do things and, and you know, be valuable to uh, brands and companies and organizations. So it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, and uh, Lingbo is, um, wants to be a partner more than a service provider. So if you're looking for um, uh, a partner that, that is specialized in B2C and global e-commerce, uh, that might be a right um, uh, partner. So it's, um, it's good to explore and you know, see what, uh, what can be, uh, uh, what can happen, you know, so. Uh, they're they're yeah. uh, based in in uh, China or in Hong Kong. Uh, it's a very, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very global team. We have people. Uh, okay, the CEO, one of the CEO of the company, is a Japanese uh, guy living married with the, uh, I mean, international group, uh, you know, family, uh, and he's living in Paris. You know, just to wow. show you. And another uh, another of the shareholder is actually from Argentina. He spent a lot of time in the U.S., but he is living in Hong Kong. And and then there's people all of all over the place. We have people in the U.S. in in you know many uh, uh, Korea, as I said, a very international team. So it's it's a global company. Awesome, that that sounds great. Well, thank you for sharing more about them. Thank you for sharing the topic with us today. And it looks like there's some fun and interesting follow-ups. Thank you all for attending today. And if you you're watching this now on a video, please, if you have trouble connecting with anybody here that you've uh, heard, especially JB, um, please send an information or an email to info at globalchamber.org and we're happy to help. JB, it's what, 11 o'clock there coming up PM? Yes, a bit late, no worries. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for hanging on so late. You look great and I appreciate the information. You have a good uh, sleep tonight, okay? All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Pleasure to uh, meeting you today and I look forward to receive more information soon. Yeah. Thank you, JB. Take care, everybody. Have a great Take day. Take care. Bye-bye. Happy September.